Now, though, <laughs> this happened 22 years ago today. Beckham could raise the roof here with a goal. Bex had already had six free kicks that day. And he hit Rosette, he hit the wall, the goalkeeper saved it. And I went over to it, I went, Bex, let me have it. And he went, Ted, you can't even reach for me. I can't, can't get in the wall. The last four years had been so tough. I think it took a toll on me that, that probably uh, I never even knew myself. I just wanted to make everyone happy. I don't believe it. David Beckham scores the goal to take England all the way to the World Cup Finals. Go on, Bex. Where were you when that went in? <laughs> I was sitting at home in my front room. Were you? Yeah. I was in LA. You know the standard hotel in LA? Yeah. I was in there. I was away working on something. Chuck. And what? <laughs> Another job. Another job. That was an unbelievable goal, wasn't it? it the free was kick. A frightening moment. I, yeah. I think it's just the fact that he'd had so many sighters before that, and it was just. Yeah, but, I, but you're saying it like it's a negative thing. I mean, he was above and beyond anyone on the pitch that day. Captain of England. No, I thought second half he played well. First half was a bit iffy. Why but are you poo pooing back? What's the matter with you? No, but listen, the second Staying half. Off. The second half, it was like he was the one who went, Do you know what? I'm not allowing this to happen. And he ran and he ran. He worked hard. He won the ball back, putting challenges in. But yeah, that free kick, if ever there was that was built for somebody, it was him. Mm. Like there were some players there and that, that situation would just crumble. God, I don't want that. He gone, no, give me this. Yeah, and it was Old Trafford and it was just, it was just perfect. Mm. Everything was perfect about it. So, the question we were going to ask, and we still will. Would a pump David Beckham get into England starting eleven under Gareth Southgate? We'll talk about that in a sec. I'm going to put this out there. I say he gets into any team in the Premier League starting eleven. Bex, no, no. What is in like what where? That doesn't matter. I don't know. Okay, doesn't matter. Okay, okay, you, okay. you put him in, and then you work out where the rest go. Okay, well listen. I'm telling you now, Liverpool would not drop Salah for Beckham. In yeah, the, but it's a different position. So, so you, yeah, but no one plays four four two now, oh, do no, they? But it's a di- well, I put him in the middle of the park then. Okay, there's an argument for that. But I still don't, I don't know if he would get into. Every... You can't. You can't compare wide of a front three. Yeah, to, to four right, four two. Yeah, you can't do that. But I'm looking at centre midfield. I'm thinking right. Yeah, I mean, there's an argument because I certainly, if you look at this current England squad, I'd, I'd probably put him in the centre midfield with Rice, Bellingham, and him. If you're playing four across the middle and you're going to choose either Saka or Beck, who are you picking? As a, f- a four, I'd go Beckham. Okay. He was, a, he was that was his position. But if it, if it was a three, mm-hmm. taking Saka. Or yeah, it's, different, it's a different, different role. Well, the wide man has been different because nowadays a right footer doesn't really play on the on the right anymore. No. They play on the left, so they it, cut they it, cut in and, and they're expected to shoot first, pass second. It, Bex it, was, if you had a Bex in his pump now, right, could you play a four four two with him on the right wing? I don't know if you could. Just because of the, managers nowadays are so worried about getting overrun in the middle of the park. That's why they put three bodies in there because mm-hmm. they think, well, I don't, if, if, you're, if you've got two versus three and then the centre four drops in as well, that's like four versus two. They don't like it, so they, they tend to try and overload. And then if you've got an inverted fullback going in there as well, you've got no chance of milling mm. the park. When well, you've watched the documentary, I'm mm-hmm. um, three out of four in. Oh, four, four, yeah. Okay. Um, I forgot just how amazing he was. You know, mm. I love Bex, you know that. I think he's a fantastic player. But when you watch that, when you look at the teams he's been in and the players he's played with and the things he did, mm. do you think we, not underestimate, do you think we forget just how great Beckham was? I don't think we ever do, because I think because of... Like, I think some people, and this is not me being disrespectful to Bex because I think he's a legend, like, absolutely legend. You just slag him off again? No, I'm not. But I think because of what he is in terms of, he's not just a footballer, he's a superstar, he's a pop, like, he's almost like a pop star, rock mm. star, act, whatever you want, alias, whatever. Mm. People then will automatically elevate him to a level that maybe he's not. So some people go, he's up there as a Dan. Yeah, well, he's not really, he's not up there as a Dan, is he? But because of everything that comes with it, you put him on this level. But watching that documentary, like, I almost, for starters, I never, I didn't realise how bad the abuse he got after 98 which is disgusting by the way mm. I didn't realise about that it was only when I was talking to my dad about it funnily enough and he's a Chelsea season to go with and he can remember when Bex came there after that the abuse that he got and his his wife got he said it was it was terrible um, so I forgot about all of that but yeah I mean he's just a, just a cool guy isn't he? just what, what a guy he is yeah. and he, just, he he seems so humble which is the mm. mad thing yeah in his pomp yes or no world class <sighs> Benty no because I, do you know what it is <sighs> Yeah, I think he had a... Of course he was world-class. Yeah, you know what, okay, I'll, I'll give you it. But my, my thing is, I just think with that world-class tag, we throw that around so much. We do. But like, I've, not so seen, much. I've not seen that player since he retired. Have you? What, as in someone who's... On the right-hand side. Well, we don't play 4 4 so it's hard. I know, but someone... That, his passing ability was... His attributes, passing, crossing... Yeah, well, frightening. Yeah, frightening. League of their own. World class, right? Yeah, world League class. of their own. Would he get into Gareth Southgate's starting eleven? Is one of the questions we're asking. Would he? 
in the middle of the park. You go right back in the middle of the park. Okay. Uh, let's be just Stuart is a Rangers fan. <laughs> Someone's put a good point. Go on, go on, hold on, Stuart. <laughs> so, okay, he said someone's put in a great quote. I mean, a Tony, he's put uh, we could have Bex in his pomp and Gareth would still pick Phillips or Henderson. <laughs> That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Hello, Stuart. Hey, good, uh, good morning, lads. Uh, you're on a perfect time, a fantastic show. I truly mean that. I mean, Super Al is my hero, but my next top three is definitely the Bente. And then I'm not sure between Goldstein and Mark Kellner. Oh, but brilliant show. <laughs> and who? <laughs> <laughs> and that's all you got time for, Stuart. What, what a, a strange way to waste your, your one and only call. <laughs> no, seriously. The two years are brilliant, mate. I really mean that. I, as far as Beckham goes, I, I love you put the question up because it's like a, a non question. I cannot think of a team that David Beckham would not get into. And I followed him. Miller Rangers, I always followed him and had the pleasure of watching him here at the LA Galaxy for six years. And he was unbelievable. I mean, irrelevant, I know, from Man United to the Galactico to here. The guy has just always been amazing. He would pull things at the heart from nothing. And I've always admired that. And I even got to see uh, Ibrahimovic when he was here as well. And that was another one. Unbelievable in his pomp. But guys, Beckham can get in any team. In fact, I wish he was in the Rangers team. This week. <laughs> I bet you do. No, hey, Benny, I'm, Benny, mate, I'm not, I'm not joking, you mate. I know I've spoke to you before about this, but honestly, we, uh, we're really needing something, mate. And you keep going on about uh, Potter. I, I take Potter. I, I take Big Sam right now, by the way, more than anything else. Hey, hey, Mister Go, Andy Go, say, can I, can I tell you a quick twenty second story about Ibrahimovic? No. Please. Yes, you can. Yes, you okay. can, Stuart. Sure. Continue. Yeah, right. <laughs> Why don't you get but Martin Kellner to tell you the story? On his debut for the Galaxy, he never got introduced to the team until the morning of the game against the LAFC. We'd never played them before. And he walked into the dressing room. I've got two mates that were actually physically there. And he walked into the dressing room and he said, obviously in English, he says, guys, I'm here. He says, who believes in Jesus? Put your hand up. And loads of guys put their hand up. And some of the Mexicans never caught what he said, so some of them never, only three people never put their hand up. And he goes, you don't believe in Jesus? And they went, oh, yeah, yeah, and they put their hands up. And he went, congratulations, you've just met him. <laughs> he went, out that day, we were down 3 nothing, and he came on and he scored two goals and we won 4-3. If I can remember rightly, Stuart, one, 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 one of his goals that day was a banger from about, was it a volley from about yards. 30 yards or something? Yeah, yeah. Tom, it was 38, and then it was 30, and then it was 40. It's probably a bit. He tells you it was 50, but I think, honestly, Benny, I think it was 30, 35, mate. I have never seen the Galaxy fans on top of tables in my life. It's always been, you know, just chan. I've been there for 20 years. The whole stadium was an absolute rapture mate. All the Hollywood people were there cheering on LA. It was unbelievable. Mm. And David Beckham was class a few times I met him. And Andy Goldstein, you're brilliant, mate. I really mean oh, thank that. thank you. Thank you. Sure, sure. How long have you been in America? Best, how long have you been in America? I've been here. For, well, I came here to go and see Scotland in the World Cup yeah. in 1986, and I never went back. You know what? <laughs> You've really lost your accent. I know. Well, I know. <laughs> I, I know. I, I've had the pleasure of being involved in the British community all my life. So, Good. I, I, listen, if we send a Glasgow, mate, I've got no chance of losing it. That's well, listen, cool. we, um, really we, love, we love hearing from you. It's very kind, your kind words. So I appreciate it. Have a great weekend, Stu. Thanks for coming on. No, thank you, guys. You're brilliant, mate. Thank you. Thanks, Cheers, Bye-bye. How much is that, Stuart? Well, that's nice for me. I'm in there. I'm just me and Ali McCoy. It's you, Mike I think, I think deep down he knows I fly in the ship. I don't um, think he knows when, that. Huh? Probably thought I was Max Russian. I wonder if, I wonder if everyone else well, in California thinks that. <laughs> in the States. Well, who are you after? What? Nobody. California, by the way, is one... Of, oh, I can't even tell you about Celebrity Mastermind, can I? can't tell you about questions I got right or wrong. I'm not allowed to. <laughs> Talk Sport Drive, super opinionated sporting debate, Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.